That's what we've been interested in, in looking at in people with Alzheimer's disease. What does their EEG look like? How many of them have these epileptiform discharges, even if they don't have a history of epilepsy? Hello, sapiens. In this week's Epilepsy Sparks Insights podcast, we hear from Alice Lamb, an adult neurologist and PI of the Lamb Lab, all about her research into something lots of people are nervous about, and that is the link between epilepsy and Alzheimer's disease. Thanks for having me on the podcast, Tori. Um, so my name is Al Slam. I'm a physician scientist. Um, I'm an assistant professor at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Um, I specialize in epilepsy as well as in memory disorders. And so I see patients in both an epilepsy clinic as well as a, as well as a memory disorders clinic. I have patients who have both epilepsy and memory disorders as well. And I also do research and uh, my research focuses at the intersection between these two diseases, between epilepsy and what we call the neurodegenerative diseases, um, which is you know, most commonly Alzheimer's disease. I'm so glad that you, well, that this is your work and you're talking to us about this because I've been thinking about the delightful state of one's brain as one gets older, especially when one has an epilepsy. That was quite a touchy subject. Um, could you give people an overview of, I don't know, like maybe statistics and, you know, what, if a person has an epilepsy um, and a neurodegenerative disorder and what that includes? Basically, the idea is, you know, they've been they've done these large epidemiologic studies or large population based studies looking at risk of, you know, if you have epilepsy, what's your risk of going on to develop dementia compared to someone who doesn't have epilepsy, right? And um, and similarly, if you have something like a dementia or, or a neurodegenerative disease, what's your risk of developing epilepsy um, compared to people who don't have a, have a neurodegenerative disease? And there's this, there's this interesting bi-directional relationship between these two diseases. So what we know is that people who have epilepsy um, have about a two to threefold increased risk um, compared to the general population um, of developing dementia later in life. Um, and similarly, people who have dementia um, have a two to threefold increased risk of developing epilepsy um, after they've been diagnosed with dementia. So it goes both ways, and that's sort of, you know, some of the mysteries of why that is and, and you know, what we can do about it are things that we're trying to, to figure out. Do we know if it's correlation or if there's causation in this or a bit of both? It's a perfect question to ask, and <laughs> we don't really know, you know, um, we don't really know from, from these studies. Um, we don't really know the mechanisms, right? Is there something about epilepsy? Is there something about the medications? Is there something about lifestyle changes in people who have epilepsy, right? Um, is it the drugs? Um, like... Exactly. So there's a lot of different things that could contribute. Um, or is there some st something specific about, you know, what's going on in the brain that causes epilepsy that might also, you know, contribute to something like um, dementia down the line? So there's all sorts of facets that you could look at this from. From what angles are you looking at it from in your lab or with your <laughs> team? <laughs> Right now, we, we, we're looking at some different angles, but we're interested in um, what we've done most of our work on is in people who have early stages of, of dementia, early stages of Alzheimer's. Is it always Alzheimer's rather than other types of dementia? Well, Alzheimer's is the most common um, type of dementia. Um, and so most of the work that's been done looking at sort of the intersection between epilepsy and, and neurodegenerative diseases has been done in Alzheimer's disease. But, but certainly there are links with other neurodegenerative diseases as well. Um, so dementia with Lewy bodies, frontotemporal dementia, all these dementias, you know, increase the risk of someone developing epilepsy. We don't actually know in, in, in the large epidemiologic studies have, that have looked at people with epilepsy developing different neurodegenerative diseases down the line. It's not totally clear what kind of neurodegenerative disease they, they develop. Does that make sense? A lot of these are based on sort of diagnostic codes. And so it's sort of a blanket, like who develops dementia? Um, but again, what kind, you know, whether it's clearly Alzheimer's, related to Alzheimer's disease pathology or, or related to other kinds of pathologies isn't, isn't totally clear at this point or even vascular. And what, what's limiting us at the moment? Why isn't it quite clear? Is it we don't have enough data yet? Um, what is it? So people look at these like large databases, right? Um, so large healthcare databases, and, and they sort of pick out diagnoses or they pick out um, ways of identifying someone who's developed dementia or who's developed different kinds of diseases. And there may be that there are good ways of stratifying, you know, within dementia, 
which kinds. Um, I'm not aware of studies that have like looked very, very closely at that. Um, they, they might exist, but, but the mechanisms, in, in my knowledge, aren't, aren't very clearly defined, right? What does your team actually do? Um, what are they specifically studying at the moment? So what we're looking at is um, people with early stages of Alzheimer's disease, right? Um, mm -hmm. And we study a few, a few different things in this, in this group. Um, a, um, we've been interested in understanding what kind of brain electrical abnormalities occur in this group, even in people with Alzheimer's disease who don't have epilepsy. Um, right. So why is it that someone with Alzheimer's disease is predisposed to developing epilepsy? Not everybody does, but some of them are. Um, and we know, you know, again, in people with epilepsy, there are seizures, but then there's also the EEG abnormalities that go along with seizures, right? Like the epileptiform discharges, the spikes that, that we can see on the EEG. So that's what we've been interested in, in looking at in people with Alzheimer's disease. What does their EEG look like? How many of them have these epileptiform discharges, even if they don't have a history of epilepsy, if they've never had a seizure? But what we've actually found is that, you know, about 20% of people who have early stages of Alzheimer's disease, even without having ever had a seizure, have these epileptiform discharges on their, on their scalp EEG. Yeah. Um, so why is that? We don't quite know yet. Um, what does it mean? We don't quite know yet. There are studies that have started to look at this. Um, so there's Keith Vossel, who's a, who's a uh, physician scientist um, out in California, has published um, a number of papers in this area as well. Um, and you know what his group found was that people with Alzheimer's disease who have these electrical abnormalities on their EEG seem to have a faster rate of cognitive decline compared to people with Alzheimer's disease who don't have that electrical abnormality. Um, and they even published a study last year, which was a clinical trial where they took people with Alzheimer's disease. They said, let's um, have them all do an EEG and, and also a MEG study, which is magnetoencephalogram, which is similar to an EEG, but on the magnetic side rather than the electrical side. Um, and let's see who has, you know, who has epileptiform discharges, who doesn't. Um, but we're going to treat everybody with a seizure medicine with levetiracetam, right? And as well as with placebo, we'll, let's see how their memory changes, um, you know, with one drug versus with placebo. And let's see. And so, so basically, you know, they did this clinical trial. And when they took everyone with Alzheimer's disease, you know, everyone in the trial, um, they didn't actually see any beneficial effect of the levetiracetam. Okay. But when they said, okay, well, let's, you know, we did these EEGs and we did these MEG studies. Now let's, you know, separate our population into people who had epileptiform discharges and people who didn't. And let's see if, you know, they responded to the levetiracetam differently. And what they found was that the, the patients who had epileptiform discharges actually had a benefit in their cognition with levetiracetam, um, whereas those who didn't have these epileptiform abnormalities um, didn't benefit from the levetiracetam. Now, that's so interesting because obviously so many of people, so many people on these anti-seizure medications can have, well, it can be a detriment to their cognitive ability. There's, there's always that concern, right? Yeah. So to have um, their cognitive ability improve when taking this, it, I guess that does that imply that it was of greater benefit to them than of detriment to their cognitive ability? That's what the study showed. Now it was a small study. Okay. Um, you know, it was, it was, I think like 30 something participants total. And, and of those maybe about, maybe about 25 to 30% had epileptiform abnormalities. So it's a small number of of patients. But, but again, remember, this is a little different from people who have frank epilepsy, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing I'll note is that the doses that they used, so um, the, the amount of levetiracetam that each participant got was something like, I think it was, I want to say 250 milligrams twice a day. It may have been less than that. It may have been 125. Um, I'll have to we can go back and look. But, but regardless, the idea is that it's, it's a much lower dose than an epilepsy doctor would typically use to treat someone who has epilepsy. You know, I typically start at a dose of like 750 milligrams twice a day. Yeah, I think when, when I used to be on it, I think I was on like two grams like yeah. BD at one point. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so you, know, you know, many people who have epilepsy are on much higher doses. Um, but, but there's this interesting thought that, that there's something about low doses of levetiracetam 
that might be helpful in people, again, specifically with Alzheimer's disease, not necessarily with, with epilepsy, but with Alzheimer's disease. And, and just to clarify for all our listeners, what's the difference between a person having uh, an epileptic seizure and having abnormal or OTT epileptiform activity? Because how does one classify it becomes a seizure? Right. So I think about seizures as being a clinical event, right? There's a change in something that happens in your brain. Some people may become unresponsive during a seizure. Some people may speak kind of gibberish or become very confused. Some people have a convulsion, right? There's some clinical outward or, or just you know, noticed manifestation of no symptom of, okay. of this activity. It's still you know abnormal electrical brain activity, but it's causing a symptom that the person or people around them are, are somehow aware of. Whereas this epileptiform activity on the EEG, think of that as electrical abnormalities where there's no obvious like clinical correlate, meaning there's no, there's no, you know, confusion. You know, this person, if you, if you ask them all the questions about, do you ever have spells where you lose time or spells where you're unresponsive or feel like, uh, you know, unusual feeling in your stomach, you know, all the qu typical questions we'll often ask when we think someone may have epilepsy, you know, they'll say, you know, no, I don't have any of these symptoms. Yet, if you do an EEG study on them, um, we can see these electrical abnormalities. So we call these subclinical epileptiform abnormalities. I wonder if we if we uh, did an EEG on everybody during a period which they were most likely to have this subclinical abnormal activity. I wonder what percentage of people would actually experience it. Do you think? I mean, it would be a guess, obviously, but what, what do you think? Do you think more people than we would think experience that? Well, I guess it depends on how many you think experience it. You know, we, so, well, I'll say that in the study that, that we did, right? So we, we, we studied people with Alzheimer's disease and, and, and did their EEGs, but we also had a control group. So we had a group of older adults who don't have um, memory problems, who don't have Alzheimer's disease, and, and also did EEGs on, on them as well. And so, you know, in that group, it was like less than 5%, a very small percentage of people um, in, in our you know, healthy con older adult control group had epileptiform uh, abnormalities, whereas, as I said, it was like 20, I want to say 22 percent in the people with Alzheimer's disease. So clearly increased compared to you know, control. Thanks so much to Alice for giving us a clear insight into the clear link between epilepsy and Alzheimer's disease.